Before coming to China, I was really excited because it was going to be something that was completely new for me. I had a specific project in mind, but after I discovered the Free Zhashun village, my whole project changed. It's quite an interesting place, but the first things I noticed were the dust, sandstorms, the industrial pollution itself, and I felt you have to be strong to get by there. I became interested in breeding in this place where the dust can make it difficult at times. I decided to investigate the symmetry of the lungs through recharge instincts and see how they could be related in an abstract way to lungs. The conditions of the village also led me to wonder how the quality of air could be improved indoors. I researched different types of plants that can help purify the air inside buildings and decided to integrate them into my real-time animations. Some of these plants can be found in the Caribbean, but they actually come from Asia and other parts of the world. I saw a lot of similarities between certain objects in China and the Caribbean. The pattern curtains on the outside of people's doors are the same which people use in the Caribbean. Casualties. In war, truth is a new sleep. Embedded with conquering armies. Early rise, dinner time, time to bed, breaking stories of the empire. In war, torture is a naked heap. Pyramids of Abner Luimas incarcerated a new in a carcel. Abu Ghraib, Mazare Sharif. Get more this and that. In war, revenge is a slip warm feed of wet spectre, a boil of poor people's children. The Duke's War, or another sad damn war. Our daughter jerks our son on a leash for all to see. Our son's head rolls on line, a muddy river wet in our lap. In war, love is still well. Tattered, battered, shattered awake. Justice never tires. The knob need hunched back. Googly eyed ascent to grace. Peace is a brew, a bitter's cup to take. In war, we are in each other's most terrible keep. From Kumena, Kamau Brathwaite. On the first day of your death, it is quiet, it is dormant like a doormat. No one foot touch its welcome. Its dust on the floor is not disturbed, nor are the sleeping spirits of this house. I sit here in this chair, trying to unravel time so that it wouldn't nap and twine. On the second day of your death, I break a small bread. I can still smell the sweet flower of your firstborn flesh. 
on the third day of your death, the water in my urine turned to blood. I cover the waterfront of the mirror with a blue cloth where your face stood. On the fourth day, you should be rising, knocking at the door of darkness, coming back to me, coming back to me. I do not hear your call. On the fifth day after your death, a young white rooster, white, white, white feathery and shining tail and tall, neighbor of sun from miles away in the next village, stands in the yard and from his red crown crows and crows and will not grow away. He struts round to the back of wall, his one eye clicking, clicking, clicking as he crows comes to the glisten of my window and he crows loud like the overflowing voice of my Trelawney waterfall where there are no tears. Oh, mother, Margaret, Margaret, ka, ka, ka. Oh, Congo, Congo, yeri, yeri, Congo. On the sixth day after your death, there is this silence of flowers. Their petularies say their shining needs, soft water needs sweet showers, needs sweet rain from heaven. I see them once again inside the chapel of my funeral. On the seventh day after your death, the yellow flower in the cupcakes in the kitchen have gone sour. There is an eye of rancid in the middle of their meal. I am unhappy like the wind and tides are restless river divers. I can't find you, I can't find you. I cannot, cannot, cannot be consoled to rivers, dreams and divers. The mad dogs of the pasture kill the cock and pillage it. Mad woman wind is scattering white screaming feathers, petals, pedals over all the brunt and burning ochre color land. On the eighth day after your death, me do nothing, nothing, nothing. I couldn't even get your English eight spell straight. On the ninth day of your death, you rise again from off the dead. I see you now and at the hour of your old, not soft, not softly dead. It is my pain, it is my privilege, it is my own torn flesh, torn fresh. Oh, let me comfort us, my child. Is not your heart is broken? On the tenth day of your death, my love, my son, my shining, Oh, Yeri, Yeri, Yeri Congo. Oh, Yeri, Yeri, Yeri Congo. Poetry sometimes forgets about relationships, eh? Because it tries to deal with too much abstraction. And in the end, it's the relationships which are so important, especially in a world like today where there's so much disaster and so much fragmentation. I think the notion of relationship, which you have just suggested, is very, very important. Yeah, and that's a good point to bear in mind. And in fact, when you listen to our poets, it might be a good idea to discern 
who is aware of the importance of relationships and who is not. Born to Slow Horses by Kamau Brathwaite Big job. Before you say anything about my hair that's missing, know this, that I permitted myself to have this massacre of superficial compliments that dripped down my split ends, you couldn't tell. And it must have gotten to my head because there I was, deep conditioning and over-loving damaged hair. Before you say anything about my hair that was all kinks, and sometimes obedience and easy tangles that swing and sway past my shoulders and reaching for my breasts like a mad dash across the finish line. Know this, that on a special occasion, I permitted foreign fingers to hover over my hairline and canopy of dark mysteries. Secrets known only to me, they crept into my dense, dense, forest and I should have known instantly that they did not like it when they produced a fine tooth comb and licking heat. I must have been asleep. I didn't know I still had that seed to think that special occasion meant bowed hair that left me with a disemboweled mentality. Stinking length singed and beat, never recovered from that explosion of deceit. Before you say anything about my hair that's missing, and before this natural hair journey can continue, I know myself to release all corpses above and beneath. sort of open to whatever comes in, you'll see all kinds of things that do not conform to your logic. Once you respond to them by acknowledging them, then they're there. And then when they become here, they bring a force with them that keeps on moving this towards a thing that is coming alive. table for me oh. and then after they've done that and then I proceeded to change it. <laughs> so we had something completely spontaneous. I am the first native born artist in the history of design. So we don't have a long artistic heritage in the Caribbean. If you take the globe, we are situated almost in the middle of it. So which means we are exposed to a maximum amount of sun. You add to that that we are small islands that don't hold atmosphere, so that we get whatever is happening, but usually we don't hold anything, so the, the air is clear. And the color that manifests in our environment are extremely intense. Mm -hmm. And color is what attracts me uh, to everything that I do. St. Martin is, for me, the most ideal spot for what I'm interested in, which is color. Color. <laughs> Anything with color. Yeah, is color nice. is always my subject. And my painting is about 40 years, right? 
And I have mainly studied color in nature, and very often away from everything man-made, including humans. But the accumulated revelation, the, the knowledge maybe you call it, or the information, the inspiration, whatever, the revelations that I've had concerning color are only going to bear the fullest fruit when it applies to a human being. Because the landscape may be spectacular, seascape or the flamboyant tree, what have you, may be extraordinary, uh, 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 powerful as a subject, but as a form of life, the sea in I and the tree in I and me and the person is a whole different relationship. And so to be able to take what I've learned from nature and see how it applies to a human being, that to me is the highest aspiration and challenge. I also feel that there is something totally unexplored in general in the relationship between the artist and the subject. We usually think that the artist selects the subject and determines and is always the principal player. I'm advocating a whole different approach. If I find myself in a field in front of a tree, it drew me player. You know what inspire means? <clears throat> in mm -hmm. spirit. Mm. Inspiration means when the spirit comes into you. So if the spirit is coming to you and we are catalysts, I'm very happy. <laughs> there it is.